Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Japanese bank stocks the last few days have fallen about 5%. Now, this is probably regarding a lot of different news regarding different central banks talking about new easing, also lower interest rates for longer. How does this affect banks? Are banks okay right now? I want to give you an update on the Japanese bank sector in a quick five to 10 minute YouTube video. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy, former hedge fund guy. I just started YouTube this year. Would appreciate if you guys subscribe to my channel and follow me going forward. Right now, the time check is currently 6.40 p.m., uh, December the 2nd, uh, December the 2nd, 2020, obviously. Now, let's go right into the charts here and let's talk about the news. And then at the very end, I'll give you my opinion on all of this. Uh, first and foremost, why don't we actually, before we go into the charts, let's talk about this news that's coming out. Why is this being talked about? Well, first and foremost, guys, there's a very large chance that the Fed is going to ease again before the December meeting. Standard Charter Bank is talking about this. A lot of different banks are talking about how the Federal Reserve is going to continue to uh, keep rates lower or maybe even do more quantity of easing right now, especially as uh, Treasury Mnuchin has uh, taken away a little bit of funds from the Fed recently. Uh, and also because, uh, you know, it looks like it's a little bit unsure whether the government is going to be able to get together a new stimulus plan or not. Also in the ECB, we're seeing that uh, Christine Lagarde, the new ECB chief, uh, hinting a lot towards more ECB easing for its next, uh, no, uh, sorry, for its next December meeting. On top of this, we also had uh, in Australia the first time ever doing quantitative easing, right? They just fired a $100 billion bazooka. They also cut their interest rates to historic low of 0.1%. I talked about this in my video yesterday. Please see the Australia video yesterday. Uh, right now, so RBA is doing quantitative easing. Finally, today, we saw news out that in the BOJ also uh, re saying ready to extend beyond March uh, a, a range of steps aimed at easing corporate fund strings. Basically, all these uh, new uh, policies that they put into place uh, originally in March, they're saying that they're ready to extend them even longer at the moment, uh, lower rates for longer. So basically, guys, all of this is very, uh, let's say, lower interest rates for longer that's the theme here and how and why is this bad for bank stocks well basically because banks uh, one of the biggest ways they make money is they uh, banks as themselves they will borrow at the short term rate as in they borrow from the central banks right now it's usually around zero and then they loan to their customers which is basically us our other business clients at the long end of the rate and because right now low for longer means that this rate is just going to stay lower and lower and also the quantitative easing means that this long rate is probably going to stay lower for longer this rate both of them are at near zero right now and the banks the profit margin is very slim and this is probably uh giving angst to the uh, bank market at the moment now let's go specifically looking at these japanese bank stocks and let's do an update in terms of chart analysis now looking at this right now i'm looking at the 1615 the topics banks etf you can also look at the topics bank uh, index they both trade together the same now right now it's gone down about five percent over the last a few days or so for the first thing let's take a look at the volume here uh today volume was shot up nicely uh the day before is low and the day before it was actually quite high this is the day that there was a big move down here on november 30th here uh, so this is the day the overall market fell, the topics fell, and the banks fell, and we see that uh, there was a significant amount of volume. MACD is definitely turning to uh, the lower at the moment right now. However, yeah, this is a little bumpy right here, so I'd say let's adjust this to the normal parameter settings just to see if we can get less bumps involved. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit better, right? I mean, there's still this weird little funky bump right here, but for the most part, it's better. And for the most part, it's showing that, yeah, it's pretty smooth overall, I'd say. It's pretty accurate looking at the last few months. It's showing that right now the bank sector is back in a decline phase at the moment. Uh, RSI right now is above, below 50, indicating downward momentum. And Bollinger Band is showing that right now. It's sort of... Uh, flirting with the bottom end of its Bollinger Band range at the moment. Now, let's looking at the charts here. Let's take a look and see uh, how does this really relate to uh, the bank sector and also how uh, can we specifically measure the bank sector versus, uh, let's say, these yields and quantitative easing. Basically, when central banks around the world do more and more and more quantitative easing, it 
usually depresses uh, the bank yields, right? Uh, sorry, not the bank yields, the government bond yields. And when it depresses the government bond yields, then this in turn usually will affect uh, the bank sector. But the best way to measure this is, I think, through correlation. So let's take a look here, right here. Let's look, take a look at the Japanese bank sector and let's look at, uh, specifically, let's look at the Japanese bank ETF here that I'm looking at. Oops. And let's measure this with, let's say, the JGB yield. Now, we want to see the JGB yield and we want to look at the 10-year yield here. So Japan, Japan yield, and you put in 10 and it should come right up. Now, let's look at this and let's measure the two together to see if there is any sort of correlation. On a weekly basis right now, the correlation is very, very low, meaning that on a long-term basis, the two are not really moving together right now. Uh, usually when yields move up, this should be, it should be positive for banks because like we said before, when the 10-year yield moves higher, it basically means the spread between the short and the long is getting long, is basically getting wider because the short-term rate is not changing at all. So looking at this right now, it should be positive, but it's not positive. If you look at a daily chart, it's also not moving at all, uh, indicating right off bat here that it doesn't seem to be moving at all with the Japanese yield market. Now, let's see if we can get the 10 year minus the one year yield. And this right here, this is a little bit more uh, positive, a little bit of a correlation here, but it seems to be up and down, up and down. And looking on a weekly basis, it doesn't seem to be moving at all here. That's sort of interesting. Finally, let's look at, let's say, the U.S. Uh, bond yield for the uh, U.S. bond market to see if we can get, uh, mm -hmm, where the heck is this thing? U.S. bond yield. It should come up. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently not. It should be US 10. There we go. US 10 yield. And let's see here if we can see any type of correlation between this and the Japanese banks. This is a little bit more correlated, interestingly. On the long term time frame here, it is sort of correlated. And on a short term time frame, on a daily basis, there's a little bit of correlation. So overall, the conclusion seems to be that a little bit more correlation with the 10 year yield than the uh, Japanese, a little bit more correlation with the U.S. 10-year yield versus the Japanese 10-year yield. Now, at the very end here, taking all this together, what does this mean for you and your portfolio? And what should you do with your bank stock portfolio? As usual, guys, investing is and always will be self-responsibility. Uh, please do note that this YouTube channel is mainly at uh, giving you aimed at giving you the tools and how to invest. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, it would be the best if you can write down your own ideas and please take self-responsibility for your own ideas. Uh, I've been recommending banks right now long term in this portfolio for your long term investment. Um, I've been doing it short term and long term. Recently, it's been more long term for and focus oriented. Looking at this chart right here, <clears throat> my first impression is that look, the only correlation that I really see is maybe with the US 10 year yield market. And if we look at the US 10 year yield market, uh, to see if this is moving up or not. We see here that it made a meaningful move basically yesterday. Uh, the yields are moving higher. Uh, and it's continued actually short term and long term. This, this chart looks pretty good to me. Uh, especially if you zoom out here on a five year on a weekly chart basis. You see here that 10 year yields right now, they're flirting right at its 50 weekly moving average. This is very close to its 200 day. So it looks like it's about to break higher here and it looks like it's still in a long term upturn trend range. So although yes, right now, short term wise, it is a little bit worrisome what's going on with the bank index. I'd say that overall, we shouldn't worry too much because it's still long term. This is a long term investment and it's trading more with the US 10 year yield. The MACD is up. And also, if you still look at the you, uh, Japanese banks on a long term weekly chart basis, the MACD also looks fine as well. So as long as this is more of a long term basis, I think it's fine. Uh, if you're playing this for a short term, then I'd say that maybe you want to get out and lessen your positions a little bit right now on a short term investing time horizon, uh, you know, maybe decrease a little bit of your position. But if you're a long term investment holder and holding this for your retirement account, I don't see any reason to worry for this. I think more quantitative easing will come. And as long as the US bond year yields don't just 
just decide to crash, which I don't think they will, because at this point, it's already priced into the market that the Fed is probably going to do a little bit of something, then I think the bank should be good to go. That's my analysis for today. Hopefully you enjoyed today's analysis. If you did, please press the like button below and please subscribe to my channel going forward. Thanks, guys, and have a great night.